episode of Jay Leno's Garage. If you've been to this website before, you know we are huge motorcycle enthusiasts. And this is my favorite kind of bike. I'll tell you what we have here. A lot of us have a lot of old bikes sitting around. Maybe you've got a mid-70s Ducati, mid-70s Moto Guzzi. It's kind of porky and slow. I got my old 75 El Dorado over there, big old police bike. I don't ride it that much because it's kind of clumsy. But what if you could make it into something cool, update it, make it kind of a classy cafe bike like this one here? Well, there's a company called Revival uh, Cycles out of uh, Austin, Texas. Well, let, let me let them tell you about it. Alan, Stefan, come on in, you guys. Stefan, you're the chief designer? Uh, head engineer. Head engineer, that's right. And Alan, you're the, the designer. designer. You're the yeah. designer, OK. So what you guys do is somebody comes to you with a kind of worn out bike they're tired of, they don't really want to get a new bike, they like the old bike. You update it a little bit, is that what we have here? Basically, yeah, I mean, it runs the gamut really, but uh, for the most part, we like to take the bikes and uh, revive them essentially, that, right. are, that are kind of falling apart and need upgrades. We specialize in, in, in either taking modern bikes and giving them a vintage flair, or taking vintage bikes and giving them modern reliability and, and technology. Because so. you know, there's so many bikes in the late 60s, mostly mid 70s, that the engines are pretty bulletproof. But right. They're just outdated and the brakes aren't the electrics good. electrics or, yeah. Yeah, right. the electric yeah, whatever. Uh, Moto Guzzi is a classic example. Those right. big old El Dorado touring bikes, old police bikes. Uh, I've, got, I've got one over there. I don't ride it a whole lot anymore. And that's what this started out as, correct? Right, yeah, exactly. It was a touring bike, really. Uh, made to be big and, and, and smooth and comfortable. And the motors are they're bulletproof. They go forever. Yeah, they, they run forever. Yeah. Uh, you guys do all the tank and tailpiece fabrication. Is this all yeah. one piece? Yes, yes. it is. Both, oh, okay. both this and that bike are, are, are built together. Right. So the suspension on it is a, is a Ducati 998S rear uh, monoshock that we did okay. all the conversion on that. The front suspension is off of a Suzuki GSX-R, obviously, with inverted front forks. Sexy front brake. I always like... A big, uh, a big giant drum brake like that. What was the uh, Italian one, the famous one? You see uh, Gromeca. On, yeah, Gromeca. 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 Yeah, that's Gromeca. what I do. You see it on one. the old Moto Guzzi yeah. Americas and all that kind of stuff. But this is the Yamaha TZ. And, okay. And, and it actually is what started the, the trajectory of the whole build, was that brake. I mean, if I came to you guys with my old 850, what would it cost to turn it into something like this? This one, you're looking in the 50 to 60 range. Really. Oh, that one. Okay. Um, but yeah, we do builds on the 15 to $10,000 okay. range as well. So, okay. Yeah. Well, the, the most impressive parts of it, you, you can't really see. What, what's underneath that tank is, is a modern uh, battery, lithium iron battery that is tiny. It's about this big, weighs mm -hmm. a pound. There's a, a computer inside the system that operates it with no fuses or relays that is pretty much fault proof. Yeah. And what is this way? Like? About the 450 probably range. No hydraulic brakes of any kind. No. no. <laughs> But things that, that are on this bike, that are, a lot of these pieces are handmade, built from scratch. Obviously, the tank and tail and the headlight, uh, to add to the modern bit of it, it's LED headlight with LED taillights. Right. So they draw very little power, which means your, your vintage electrical system. And you retain, obviously, the shaft drive. Right. Correct. Yeah. But we did modify the swing arm heavily in order to switch to a monoshock. And I'd gone through and done all this, the geometry to make sure that that works appropriately. Uh, worked out the steering geometry, so the chassis setup has actually been done correctly, which we find a lot of builds don't end up doing that. Nicely done. How many gallon tank is that? About four? About four, yeah. It, you go quite a way on one of these, actually. Yeah, you know? yeah. And, the, and the, same, the same idea went into this bike, only it's a 2010 with fuel injection. Okay. And we made it look more vintage, obviously wiping out. If you've seen the factory V7s, all of this is normally really full, uh, and you've got yeah, plastic covers over everything. I can't even see where your battery goes in this one. It, it's all, well, this one is in here. Yeah. Oh, I see. It's up in here. All right. That right. one, it's up underneath the tank. But oh, here, very yeah. nicely yeah. done. Yeah. yeah. This is pretty wild as well. <laughs> so this bike starts off, if you remember, the, the 2006 Sport Classics have a big, wide plastic tank. We know the guy actually who designed it, Pierre Terblanche. Okay. Um, and it, it, because of production, you know, you've got a big plastic tank that hangs off the side. The tail section was really wide to yeah, fit yeah. the American, is what they said. Yeah. yeah. But, but we changed it, cut the whole tail, frame, uh, the tail section off, and, and narrowed it. And then, of course, these pieces are all... Are you know, I always said I, I really never liked any motorcycle I couldn't see through, you know. So I kind of <laughs> like the idea that yeah. you can sort of see through it. You know, the classic Vincents, the classic uh, mid-60s Triumphs, Bonnevilles, they all, you can just see through them. There's all kinds of space, you know. Yeah. Gives it a visual lightness, even yeah, if it is Yeah, a heavy, visual right? lightness. Yeah. yeah, very nice. Beautifully done. Where's the key? How do you start it? <laughs> Actually, that's one thing we love to use. We use a, a, what they call an RFID, right. a, a cordless key, or a wireless key. Um, and this is essentially the key. Oh, but I they see. also, so you can program it to however you want to use it. 
but they also have a small RFID that you can put embed in one of your leather gloves, so you right. don't carry key. So all you do is swipe it on the sensor, which is right here, oh, underneath okay. the tank. So you go and like that. Yeah, and it'll and it'll kick on. Well, on this one it's hard to see, but yeah, yeah. it kicks on. Okay. Right. Oh, yeah. Very cool. Let's take it for a ride. a fat guy that lost a lot of weight. Not me, the bike. I haven't lost any weight. One thing about these goosies, they got, they got a lot of torque, boy. All your power is down the bottom. pattern takes a little getting used to. Well, it's the lightest motor goozy I've ever driven. And for a solid mounted engine, there's hardly any vibrations at all. You know, a lot of these twins would be shaking and your watch hands would be falling off, but not this. It's actually quite smooth. You can just fall into corners with it. It's so light. And no gauges to distract you. No speedometer, no tack. Like a Harley, you just, you know when to shift by the sound. Well, it's certainly nimble. The gear shift, it takes a little getting used to. It's a different pattern. You know, you get so used to the standardized stuff that happened after 76. But uh, got a lot of power, a lot of torque, and handles nice. Let's take it up on the freeway, see how it cruises in fifth. This thing's got so much torque, you never get out of third gear around town. Come on, we'll take it for a ride. Boy, you get into fifth gear, the revs just drop to nothing, and it's really smooth. You can take a long ride on this bike, no problem. With this brushed aluminum finish, it's not shining in your eyes the way chrome would. So that's kind of nice. Nice job, you guys. It's a lot of fun. You know, if you've, uh, if you've got an old Goozy, and you guys know anything from a full-out custom job that's tens of thousands of dollars, the stuff that's just a few grand, right? So pretty much on the limit, so. Yeah, it's fun to take a big old heavy piece of iron and make it lightweight. Mm -hmm. I mean, it handles better than any, any Goozy I've ever driven, so it's really nice. Nice job. It's a lot of fun. This shifting pattern is odd for me. That takes a little getting used to. But other than that, uh, it's pretty good. You know, I got an old Goozy over there. I, I, I could do something with that. Thanks, you guys. Thank you. Thanks, See you next week. <laughs>